Hi, Math Aid students. I hope you're having a good Monday. I'm here with your lesson for you as we keep moving forward in Chapter 13. So this is actually, I really like this lesson. It's a very important lesson. Learning this skill will help you so much in Algebra 1, what we're doing today. As a matter of fact, I use it right now in Algebra 1. Um, so it's really good for you. So we just have to keep pressing forward. We only have a couple more weeks until we get to the end of the semester and we just gotta stay strong and stay focused just a little bit more. All right, so let's say a prayer. Father in heaven, I just thank you that you're faithful and you're good. I pray for all of my students that you would help them focus and learn well from the words that I'm speaking, that they would have understanding and master this work and do great on their chapter 13 test. And Lord, I pray for myself that you would strengthen me and help me right now to be the very best teacher I can be, using the best words possible. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm going to sit down, and we're going to get started. So here is uh, the overhead, and this is lesson, uh, not chapter, let's say lesson 13.4, and... In the book, they don't call it this, but we're going to call it FOIL, all right? So what we're doing is we're multiplying binomials. Okay, so when you have FOIL, we use that word because it stands for the four steps of what you're going to do. First, outside, inside, and last. So if you remember FOIL, you'll remember uh, to do everything you need to in order to finish the problem. Okay? So let's, uh, we'll talk our way through this process. Okay? And you will understand it. So here's number one, find the product. All right, so here we are, x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, so if you think about it, you've got four terms here. You've got x, 2, x, and negative 3. You want to make sure that you multiply every term by every other term. Otherwise, you're not getting the full answer, okay? So this x has to multiply by 2 and x and 3. This 2 has to multiply, well, this x has to multiply by x and negative 3. This 2 has to multiply by x and negative 3 and so forth. And it's, it's really hard to keep track of that. <coughs> of everything and make sure you do all of the multiplying so this will help you foil all right now if you think of it as when we go left to right the X would be the first term right this would be number one this would be number two and this would be number three and number four moving from left to right. If I was just counting, I could say that the x was first, the 2 is second, third, and fourth. Okay? So it makes sense then that I could say that this x here was the first. All right? Now there's a couple other ideas I want to show you. So actually, this you could also say that um, this is first. And this is also first, because it's the first term in our second binomial, okay? So if I want to multiply first, I'm multiplying the first term in this parentheses times the first term in the second parentheses. So that would be x times x, all right? Now we add all that stuff together. Now. Let's look at it another way. If I'm not counting left to right, but I just have four things there, 
four terms. There are two that are on the inside, the two and the x, and two that are on the outside, the x and the negative three, right? So if I wrote them like this, do you see that these two would be on the outside? and these two would be on the inside, okay? So, my O here stands for outside. And so I'm gonna multiply the two terms that are on the outside of the four that I have. So that would be X times negative three. All right? Now, I, my next letter is I, which is for inside, and this is as opposed to um, the outside. So you can see X and 3 in their position are on the outside, so that would make sense then that the 2 and the X are the two terms that are on the inside of the 4 that I have. So then I would multiply 2 times X, okay? Now, the L stands for last, which I said that up above, and that's in comparison to the two that are the first. So I said here that the X and the X are the first. So X is the first term out of X plus two, and X is the first term out of X and negative three. So now I'm gonna multiply the two that are the last. Do you see that? So two comes second in this parentheses, and the negative three comes second in that parentheses. So I've got two times negative three. Okay, so if I have four different multiplication problems, then I know I have them all. I've multiplied every term by every other term in my problem, so now I can simplify. So x times x is x squared. x times negative three is three x. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then these two in the middle can be combined. So negative 3 and positive 2 is negative 1, and negative 6. So that is my final answer there. Okay, so now when you're showing your work, you want to make sure you at least have that, that line there and then your simplification. At first, it's a really good idea to do both lines to help make sure you've got it straight. But once you can go a little faster, that's fine. But you do wanna make sure you're not doing it all in your head, but you're writing stuff down. So let's do another one, number two. Find the product of y minus four times y minus five, all right? Okay, so we're going to look first at the first. So y is first in this parentheses, y is first in the second, so I have y times y. And I'm going to add that to, with foil, what's next? Outside. So the two that are on the outside, um, we could say that first and last refers to um, order. And outside, inside prefer, uh, refers to position, okay? So order, first, second, third, last. Position, are they outside or inside? So I've got y times negative five. And then for i, inside, I've got negative four times y. That's inside. And then last, I'm running out of room. I'm going to go down here a little bit. I've got negative 4 times negative 5. Okay, don't forget to take the negative with it if I've got a minus. Okay, so y times y is y squared. y times negative 5 is negative 5y plus positive 4y plus 20. Okay? Oh no, I'm sorry, that's a positive y, so this is negative 4. Okay, so then I have negative 5 and negative 4 is negative 9 plus 20, and there's my answer. So if you remember FOIL, 
you'll be just fine. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of OIOs. Uh, find the product. Here's number one, x plus one times x plus three, and number two is m minus four times m minus three. Okay, why don't you go ahead and pause the video and try those first two, and then um, <clears throat> we'll come back in just a minute and go over those. Okay, so let's go over these. X times X is X squared, that's first. Outside is X times three. Inside is one times X, and last is one times three. Okay, so I can add these two in the middle, and I get four X plus three. Okay, so that's my first answer. And number two, m times m is m squared for first, outside, the two terms on the outside. Uh, m times three, negative three is negative three m. And then in the middle, negative four m. And negative four times negative three is 12. All right, so let's multiply these two, or add these in the middle together, so I get negative 7m plus 12. Okay, now they're going to get a little harder. You don't always just have a single variable in your uh, binomials. Sometimes you'll have a negative, and sometimes you'll have a number, like this. Okay, and FOIL still works. You just get more than x squared, you'll have a coefficient in the front for an answer. So let's do the same thing, it's just a little bit harder. Negative 3x times negative, or positive 8x is negative 24x squared. And then on the outside, I've got negative 3x times 7, negative 21x. And the inside, 2 times 8x is 16x, and then last, whoops, is 2 times 7, which is 14. All right, if I add these two in the middle, I get negative 24x minus 5x plus 14. So that's my answer. It's just a little bit harder. Okay, let's do one more of those. How about this one? 2x minus 5 times 3x plus 4. All the same thing. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. <clears throat> On the outside, I've got 8x. Inside, I've got negative 5, be careful, negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x. And last, I get um, negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. So my final answer is negative 7x minus 20. There we go. Okay, I want you to try one of those. Here's your OIO, number one, 3t minus 4 times t plus 2. So go ahead and uh, pause the video and um, work that out. Okay, let's go over this. So I've got 3t times t is 3t squared, and 3t times 2, that's outside, is 6t. 
Then inside is negative 4t. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Okay, so I get 3t squared plus 2t minus 8. And that's my final answer. Okay, and the last one, number 5, I'm going to write out for you. <clears throat> U deposit 1 dollar into a savings account with interest compounded annually. The balance of the account after two years can be found using the expression r plus 1 squared. Expand and simplify. Basically that means use FOIL. So this will represent, and actually just so you know, this is part of a formula that is very common in accounting. I took accounting in college and we had to do a lot of algebra to figure out um, interest, compound interest, if you put a certain amount in an account after a while, how much money does it make. Um, there's very important things uh, involved with that. So we do use algebra for that. So that means 1 plus r times 1 plus r. This whole thing is squared, right? So that means I've got the same thing two times. 1 plus r is multiplied by itself. So now I've got two binomials and I can use FOIL to figure it out. So 1 times 1 is 1. On the outside, 1 times r is r. On the inside, r times 1 is also r. And then on the last, r times r is r squared. And I can add the two in the middle. And I get that. Now, usually I write it in standard form where I have my x highest exponent first. And that is our lesson for today. I hope that you understand FOIL. It's very useful. You will use it a lot in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And uh, so I hope you have success with your Monday lesson. Bye now.